Are you in a couple looking for a third? Or are you single and searching for a dating app that actually encourages you to embrace your sexual side? Field values sex positivity and encourages you to share your desires and interests directly to your profile. You can share freely about how traditional or how kinky you may be. And here's some great news. You can download the app for free by going to field.co. Just click on the link in our episode description to get the Field app for free today. What are some of your favorite, maybe like movies that you've done, Mm -hmm. specific characters that you've played that like you really enjoyed? Um, I've done so many amazing things, like specifically, I feel like with Brie Mills, Mm -hmm. she writes like the coolest scripts. And even in her AMA the other day, she was talking about this movie I did years ago with her, A Delicate Vice. Mm -hmm. And I was a hooker. And Kenna James was my driver. And that sounds like such a like simple plot, but like it was fucking like I cried genuinely during the sex scene, like because the whole movie, all of the dialogue, like those three, two, three, however many days of work were so emotional. The characters were so connected. You know, the the everything was so nuanced, like it got to the point where it felt like beautiful and real to me. So like during the culmination of the movie when we had that like sex scene where she knows like I'm never going to really love her but I'm like like that's what I like I I like sell it to me if you sell it to me I will act it the fuck out because I like playing pretend like I feel like that's part of the reason that I'm in this whole job like glam me up, give me the fantasy, let me play another role, let me wear crazy clothes I would never wear. Like, I love to role play in this safe space, Mm -hmm. you know? And and I'm like a neurotic Virgo, so there's not a lot of places that I really feel like good and safe. Like, I did a lot of swinging before porn, but like, I would have never done a gangbang at the swingers club. Like, I would have never felt truly safe to do a lot of those things. I would have never like spent three days getting into character with someone to the point where I could cry during sex. But like, that's fucking beautiful to me, Mm -hmm. you know? So the fact that porn can like bring me all of this like erotic pleasure in this like huge variety of like experiences and for my neurotic like safety rule following self to feel really at home is like really fun. It's like, it's like a Cherie playground, honestly. Like this pretty person saying this crazy shit, doing this thing, and I get to dress like this with pro hair and makeup. Like, yeah. <laughs> so what you just said goes against the narrative that so many people buy into mm-hmm. um, about the porn industry. And so many people who've been in the porn industry for a long time have said, like, this is a place where I can safely act out my fantasies. Like, a hundred percent. But like, most people see the porn industry as a very unsafe place to be. And they think that, you know, yeah. people on set are always being abused and manipulated mm-hmm. and exploited. So what is it about porn that makes you feel like it's a safe space for you? I mean, porn just is objectively safe. You know, we have testing. We have on-set liaisons making sure you're safe. We have a huge crew making sure you're safe. You have safe words. You have, well, I have, you know, I'm an adult with a a strong sense of like control and autonomy. So I feel very comfortable saying no. Mm -hmm. You know, all these things make me feel super safe. All all the talent, you know, even in, and I think in-person work is fantastic and beautiful, but you know, there's a a power discrepancy. Like, the person, the the provider is getting paid. The other person is paying. So, mm-hmm. you know, the provider has the power. Um, I like that I'm getting paid and my co-star is getting paid. Like we're on the same plane. Mm-hmm. Uh, all of those things make me feel super, super safe. As for why the public thinks it's unsafe, um, I don't think that that's based in reality at all. I have so many different theories, but like what I kind of come back to is that I wonder what people love to shit on us. Mm -hmm. People love to, to white knight us. People love to think we need saving. And I feel like a lot of that actually feeds into people's erotic fantasies of us. Mm -hmm. And I feel like especially men I wonder how they would feel if they really accepted that we are autonomous, 
powerful and completely joyously in control of our professions. I think there is part of the dialogue that society puts on us that that is like part of the sexual sexualization process almost. You know what I mean? Like objectified, nothing, worthless, only job we could get. Like I wonder if there's something in that that makes us feel safe to them. Mm. You know what like I mean? Like non-threatening, you mean? Non-threatening and just like... Like a wife whose husband maybe sees an in-person service provider can reassure herself by saying, oh, she's just a whore. Yeah, she's, she's worthless. just a whore. She's, worth nothing. she's worthless. It or doesn't matter. Or someone whose matter. boyfriend watches a lot of porn. Right. They're nothing. They're practically not real people. If you met them in person, you would hate them. They're all drug-addled losers. Like decreasing our value like that helps us feel safe, mm. I think. That makes you know? sense. Because our industry is and has been safe for a really long time. Mm -hmm. So why is the mainstream dialogue still against us? I think people feel so shameful about themselves and so shameful about sex and so shameful about expressing their sexual selves to see powerful people doing it so openly and brazenly like you kind of got to shit on that otherwise like what does that say about you right, right. you know what I mean yeah. like and no I that can't be powerful and beautiful I, I can't feel that way you know sex must be shameful and shitty yeah. And yeah. you all, it's funny too, because you always see people like specifically referring to the female talent. You never really hear a lot of people oh, talking about how like it's the, the male talent is oh, no, being no, no, exploited. No. The yeah. male talent gets jobs outside of porn easily. The male talent is glorified. You know, it's not. And, and even if you talk to people that they couldn't possibly be used, they have penises, mm -hmm. right? Like that's ridiculous. Do you think that so the because you have a penis hanging down your legs means yeah. that you can't be abused and my vagina means that I can't like what kind of misogynistic old school crap is that? I think that that alone shows you the dialogue people almost like need to feel to watch it. Yeah. Do you, you think know? that the actual penetration has something to do with it? Because, you know, a lot of girls, and you for a long time were girl, girl only. And Absolutely. that feels like more acceptable, right? Absolutely. And then also, um, you know, there's even like going, even going back to, even if we start talking about like gay sex, if we go back mm -hmm. to like, you know, Roman Top times spottoms. where, where, where emperors had, um, you know, like their boys that, mm -hmm. that they would have sex with, it was like seen as okay back then if you were the penetrator, but if you were on the receiving end, that was like emasculating in some way. So do you think like the penetration has something to do with that power dynamic? It probably does because I think a lot of um, femdom artists that don't receive penetration and only provide penetration mm -hmm. might not get this quite the same vibe, but I'm not sure. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if it's, you know, like the sex or gender you were born with. I don't know if it, I don't know. It, and I don't know if it's different in other countries, but it really feels strong, at least in the United States. And even when I transitioned, like you said, from girl, girl to boy, girl, um, I know a lot of people don't make that transition because they don't want to decrease the amount of human beings they can date mm -hmm. because more men specifically are willing to date you bizarrely. If you're only having sex with other women, that somehow doesn't feel as... Uh, I don't know, threatening. insecure, threatening, yeah. which is bizarre because to me that should feel like more threatening, if anything, because like you don't have the same equipment, you can't compete. But mm -hmm. our society has sexualized female-female relationships so much that they almost feel hot mm -hmm. and not threatening, which is fucked up in itself. Yeah, because it's you like know? almost every boyfriend is okay with you having sex with another girl, but not right. another man. Like if it's a threesome that your guy wants, like he wants another woman in there. He doesn't want another man. A in lot there. of times. Yeah. yeah. I, I wonder if for the new generation that it, I hope to God that's changing for them because these gender roles are stifling. Yeah. To be honest. They really are. And they I, really are. I didn't really think about that so much until I started doing this podcast. I have to admit, I had a lot of like misconceptions about like what was emasculating for men and everything until I started talking to people like Michael Vegas, yeah. you know, who likes to be pegged, but like nobody, I don't think anyone would say like Michael's an, a, a, a 
de- an unmasculine man, whatever that even Dude, means. Men's G spots are in their ass. Women's G spots are not in their ass. Why doesn't every man want to be pegged? I think it's because we've said a lot. Like most men would love to have anal sex with their girlfriend right. and would love for them to love that. Mm-hmm. I think a huge reason that a lot of men don't explore their prostate, like a huge pleasure zone, is because we've told them that it's emasculating. Yeah. That's terrible. Yeah, that's so true. So many more women have anal sex, and we do not have a G-spot in our ass than men. Like, that doesn't make any physiological sense. That is crazy. That is pure society. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Are you in a couple looking for a third? Or are you single and searching for a dating app that actually encourages you to embrace your sexual side? Field is the alternative dating app for couples and singles. As the largest dating community of progressive humans across the globe, Field connects the curious and the open-minded. Field has built a community for awesome, ethical, like-minded people who can explore their sexuality with others free of judgment or shame. Whether you're into cuddles and long walks on the beach or shibari and BDSM, Field welcomes it all. You can share freely about how traditional or how kinky you may be. The app is inclusive to all, no matter your gender or orientation. When you join, you can choose from over 20 sexual and gender identity options. And here's some great news. You can download the app for free by going to field.co. Just click on the link in our episode description to get the Field app for free today.